Hi, everyone. I'm Mike, the superintendent, and I want to welcome you to our second annual ACT conference. So I first want to thank the EDI office. I want to thank Assistant Superintendent Renee Haywood. I want to uh, thank Donnell Williams, the Director of Professional Growth and Culture, and Carmela Jackson, who is the Confidential Administrative Assistant, for all their hard work over the last year on getting this conference ready. They did a great job, so thank you for that. I also want to thank the school committee, members that are here today. We have Cynthia Rivas Mendez and Tony Rodriguez. I want to thank the school committee for their support and their commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, and also their commitment to our 90% proficiency in five years. So thank you very much. Um, I want to thank all the presenters today and all uh, that, are, that put so much time into doing this today, taking their time to do it, and we really look forward to your presentations. I want to thank the staff of the Brockton Public Schools. I want to thank all the teachers, the support staff, the administrators, everybody that works in the buildings that really do the hard work every day uh, on the front lines and, and support each other and support our students. I want to thank you because obviously it's been a rough three years. Um, I know things aren't still perfect, but I really appreciate all you do. Um, so the ACT conference this year, it aligns with uh, the superintendent's proficiency commitment, uh, as you know, 90% in five years. This is not a cheap jingle or a cheesy political ad. This is real. Uh, it is a commitment to, from this, it's called the superintendent's com uh, proficiency commitment, but it's the district's commitment. It's the community's com commitment to the 90% for students in English and math. Uh, at the end of five years and, and aligns with our strategic plan, which is five years as well. So again, this is something that we believe strongly in. We believe that we can do it and we have to do it together. At the, uh, the ACT conference theme is called Cultivating Educational Excellence in the using the Broughton Public Schools three focus areas, effective instruction, active reading and writing, and positive relationships. I want to thank our student ambassadors who I was joking with earlier that um, got out of bed today on their day off. Um, my three teenagers are still sleeping, so I uh, want to thank you for that, and I give you credit, and I want to thank you the, for the work you've been doing with Donnell in the EDI office, and your voices are so important for us to hear, uh, and we really appreciate uh, you putting your time and effort uh, and your honesty. Um, giving it to all of us, which we need desperately. I, so I want, I want you to enjoy today as we learn from each other. We learn how to better understand each other, our differences in our backgrounds and where we come from that will help support us and will help support our students. So um, we can do this, our proficiency commitment. We're going to do it together. And again, equity is proficiency. So. Thank you, have a great day. I'll be walking around to visit the workshops to say hello. But again, I really appreciate your support of our students, your support of each other's. And I wanna now introduce Renee Haywood to come up and give a few more words before we start. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much. Um, this is such an exciting time, and I wanted to welcome all of you all to our second annual Achieving Change uh, Conference. As you recall, about a year ago, we were doing this virtually because we didn't know what COVID had for us. So we had to pivot and we had to make some changes, but now we're all here together and we have an amazing opportunity to do something unique. This is unique. There are other districts across the state that they're not doing this. They're not taking an entire professional development day and closing down central office so that we can all learn and do better for our kids. So I really appreciate the leadership of our superintendent, Mike Thomas, and also our deputy, Sharon Walder, for the vision that they have had and the path that Sharon especially has paved for me to even be here. This is really exciting and there's three objectives that we'll um, hope to meet today. Uh, the first is to use culturally and linguistically responsive and sustaining practices to focus effective instruction on student readiness, learner profiles, cultural linguistic community backgrounds, and lived experiences to promote self-directed independent learners. That's just one objective, that's a lot. 
Objective two, apply an equity, diversity, and inclusion lens to support active reading and writing learning goals for all students, particularly student subgroups that have been historically and traditionally marginalized. For example, students with disabilities, multilingual learners, racially and ethnically diverse students, LGBTQI students, and so forth. And then the third objective, to create a positive and supportive classroom and school climate that promotes positive relationships between students and adults, validates student voice, and affirms a positive self-concept and identity. Again, we get the privilege to lead this work um, here in Brockton. And there are other folks that are watching, so I hope that you are just as excited as we are. I, I want to also just, um, just do some really important housekeeping. Uh, we have some snacks for you. We have some water for you. So um, we had some really generous donors, um, generous silver donors, the Brockton NAAC, NAACP and the Cape Verdean uh, Women United. Um, they were our silver donors and then bronze donors, the Law Office of Rita Mendez and D'Agostino Insurance. And so we're really grateful for them because of their contribution, we were able to provide that. But in addition, we will have pop-up restaurants from our city, um, food that represents our city. We've got We've got Cape Verdean food, Haitian food, we've got Cape Cod pizza and others. So they'll be set up in the different cafeterias and we also have the sausage guy from Fenway. He's going to be set up outside of the tennis courts. So please go out there and, and uh, patronize his business as well. Now we're going to do something, um, something we did uh, last year. If you look on page seven in your booklet, there is a land acknowledgement for the first American nation indigenous people and an acknowledgement for American descendants of slavery. And these acknowledgements are important as we um, approach this work in a humble way. We're committed to these acknowledgements because this is American history. This history is well documented and before any meaningful progress can be made, we must look back and learn from our past and hold ourselves accountable to these acknowledgements which are rooted in EDI, DEI work. So before we close and get started with our workshops, I just want to have Darnell Thigpen Williams, my right hand guy, come up here. Um, he has taken the lead in this conference and he has also been uh, teaching a class for our student ambassadors over the last several weeks. And he's going to just have them come up behind him as he makes just a very brief statement before we get started. Thank you. Thank you, Renee, for those remarks. Good morning, everyone. I am honored to be here this morning with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent to welcome you to the second annual Achieving Change Together Act Conference here at Brockton Public Schools. The Act Conference was established in 2021 by the Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion to support the faculty and staff's professional growth and learning by centering EDI, DEI practices. We believe simply that a focus on student proficiency is a focus on equity, and that inclusion is really about ensuring that all students feel a sense of belonging. The theme of this year's conference, Cultivating Educational Excellence in the BPS focus areas, could not be more timely. Our education system needs to be more accessible than ever to all students. Our goal for today is that each of you will see yourselves and your role as critical in advancing the important work of this district. Whether you are in the classroom or in, the, or in, an, in an office, you are integral to the superintendent's proficiency commitment, which we all know now, 90% student proficiency in ELA and math over the next five years. We are nearly 2,800 people strong in this district. And we are here today on a shared learning journey 
to promote educational equity and excellence. We are here from across the district, representing various different roles. Some of us are here as classroom teachers, MTAs, paraprofessionals, health and PE teachers, educational and instructional leaders, and instructional coaches, school adjustment and guidance counselors, administrative assistants, and support staff and nurses. Today we have over 50 external workshop facilitators who have joined us in Brockton. And we have 40 internal workshop facilitators who have stepped up to the call, to the call for this learning journey that we all are on together. Each of these presenters have invested countless hours and effort to ensure that the workshops provide meaningful and practical experiences for all of you. So with this in mind, we recognize that some of you may not be in the workshop that you chose, but we ask that you maintain a positive, flexible, and growth mindset about the workshop that you are assigned in for the benefit of all the learners in that group. Together, we are on a learning journey, and this journey requires your engagement and collective focus to transform learning outcomes for our students. Remember, learning begins with each of us. Behind me, I'm most proud of these incredible scholars who stand behind me. Take a minute just to look at all the scholars, because these people here are byproducts of this district. They went to school here from pre-K all the way to high school. And they've stepped up and responded to the call to be student leaders. And today they are working on their day off of school to be here as student ambassadors to aid us in our learning. But this afternoon, they're going to be running the town hall meeting. As this town hall meeting was designed by the student ambassadors, and it's about the student ambassadors, and the theme of the town hall meeting that you're going to hear this afternoon is really about how do we create, we Brockton, how do we create a welcoming, inclusive learning environment where all of us feel included and safe to grow and to learn and to inspire to, for leadership. So that's what you're going to hear from them this afternoon. Um, the other thing I want to say about each of these nine students who are standing behind me is that since the beginning of the school year in September, they have been taking a course with me here at the high school entitled Introduction to Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging. And we wanted to make sure that they had a real sense of what that meant to be in a student ambassador. And they do, and you will hear. So in my parting words, I will say thank you for your work. We appreciate you, we value you, and um, we wish you a productive conference experience today. Thank you. Hello, oh, my name is Jahir Tino. And my name is Mateo Rasher. And welcome to the Brockton Student Ambassadors Show. Before we get... <laughs> Before we get started, we just want to give a shout out to our stage manager. So let's first off introduce Elizabeth Scott. We have Kaylin Chavez. And Sophia Denise. Right before we move on, we're going to get a quick introduction from our stage managers. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Kaylin Chavez. I'm a junior at Broughton High School. The reason why I become a student ambassador is I don't get a chance to do all these leadership opportunities or such things like that because I shy away of all these opportunities. When I was introduced with the Student Ambassador Program, not only it benefited me to improve myself overall, but to improve this, this district in general because 
Such being a student from K to a junior in Broughton High School, Brought in Broughton District, the public schools, there has been some ups and downs lately during the past few years. So we want to re represent student voices and represent within this program. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sophia Denise. I'm a junior at Brockton High. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I became a student ambassador so that I can better the Brockton public schools, especially Brockton High. There's so many problems that I think go unnoticed or aren't talked about enough, so it's very important that we bring them up in this conference and just talk about them. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Scott, and I am a junior here at Brockton High, she, her. And I became a student ambassador because I love this. I love the opportunity to not only just advocate for um, st other students, but just an overall, or students here at Brockton High, but overall this district, right? And um, I thank um, Darnell Williams for this opportunity to be a part of this group and uh, my mates as well. And as a stage manager, we are in charge of the setup. Um, so we made the table tents, we made the banner, and we assist our um, mates in this. So thank you very much for coming. And before we get started, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone in the crowd, the audience, staff, and administrators who came here to watch and support our student body. So can you give a round of applause to yourself, please? Thank you so much. Right now to meet the rest of our panelists. Let's introduce them. First one, Staina Alexandra. Marcos Gomes. And we got Hans Medeos. Yeah. Amelia Vera. And now to introduce the parents. So first off, we got Kevin Nolan. David and Psalm. Hey, Psalm. We have David and Psalm. And lastly, we got Miss Samaya. Well, I just want to thank each and one of you guys for being here today. And we're just going to get quick started with the presentations on give us a little bit about yourself, why you guys are here. We're going to start off over here with Staina. Hi, um, I'm Staina. Um, I'm a sophomore at Brockton High, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, the reason I, be I became a student ambassador is to help people and to accomplish things that I didn't know I could and to be a voice for younger um, generations, um, to be there for them with things that they cannot do, et cetera. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marcos Gomes. I'm a junior. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I became a student ambassador to make sure everybody has an equal opportunity at success and in education. Um, not only that, but to make sure everybody um, feels comfortable while pursuing this equal opportunity. Hi, my name is Oscar. Um, I joined the Student Ambassador to not only improve myself and be a moral high ground, but to be somebody that people can be inspired of and to help them out in the future for the next generation. Hi, my name is Amelia Vieira. I'm a junior, ooh, sorry. I'm a junior here at Broxton High School. Um, I became a student ambassador um, to create a more, an inc more inclusive and equitable environment for everybody to be um, and to feel comfortable in. 
Um, I've had a great experience at Brockton High and um, in the Brockton School District in general, and I feel like having that experience and making that experience for everybody else is incredibly important, especially in such a predominantly um, cultured community. It's important that everybody feels welcome and safe in their learning environment. And for the parents, can we just get a brief inter introduction, please? Hey, sure. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Samira Murillo. And the reason I am be here is because, first of all, I am immigrant. And my children, I am raising my children here in the United States. And for me, it's very important to understand the system and to support the system and to help my children to have a better education. And I know when I do that, I am helping everyone as well. Uh, hello, my name is Kevin Nolan. Um, I'm a resident of Brockton and a father of three children, two of which are currently in the public school system. I attended the public school system when I was younger also. Uh, when I was asked to come here, I was happy to help just so that I can provide any input I can to help make the school system better for the kids. Hi, my name is David Anselmi. I'm very happy that here today with everybody. The program is very important for the parents and represent the parents. Thank you. As you heard earlier, my name is Mateo Rasher and I'm half of your hosts here today. I'm a junior and I use he, him pronouns. And the reason why I became a student ambassador, which we will be elaborating on what that is in a little bit, is because I think it's really important to speak up for people that don't have a voice. And I think a lot of things in this system are great and I think a lot of things in this system have to change. And that's only gonna happen if the people experiencing these issues are the ones that speak up about them. You can take a seat now. I'm Hello, everyone. As I previously introduced, my name is Jahir Tineo Castillo, and I'm a senior here at BHS. I go by he and him. And one of the reasons why I became a student ambassador is because I want to be part of the change. I want to be able to create a community where people want to come here. I want people to come here and actually learn and, you know, have fun. And I just want it to be positive, which kind of brings us to our next thing is, what are our themes for this Brockton Student Ambassador Show? Our themes are creating a welcoming, supportive, and positive school climate and culture. Well, thank you. Keep that in mind as we get the show started. Okay, now we're over here. <laughs> My name is still Matt Rasher. Okay. <laughs> Very quickly before we get onto our conversation, I wanted to say what we do as ambassadors and why we're here having this conversation today. Um, we came together as a group of ambassadors with the help of Mr. Williams over there. Give him a round of applause. We had a class together uh, about one, uh, once a week just talking about equity, inclusivity, and diversity and planning for this conference together. And our job as student ambassadors is to represent our fellow students in matters of equity, inclusivity, inclusivity and diversity. And the reason why we're here today is to have an open conversation about these topics in hopes that everyone can reflect and learn from each other. All right, what's our first question? Ooh, this is why we're all here, right? So our first question is, what are some highlights from a student point of view of attending Brockton High or Brockton District? We're going to start off over here with Staina. Um, so one of my highlights of coming to Brockton Public Schools were, was I could find um, people from my own culture where I could go and have the same story with. Um, I could find somebody with similar story where I came from and then could somewhat fit in with them. But yeah, that's one of the highlights. Like wherever you come from, you'll always find somebody that's there and it's very diverse with every um, nationality, ethnicity and stuff, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, attending school in the Brockton public school system has had its highs and lows. Um, as Taina said, there's great diversity at this school, making sure that almost every student or it, basically every student can find their place here. Um, they also have a really good education system and they will make sure that every student can go through their education all the way to the end and like find success in what they want to do. Um, a good highlight of the Rockton Public School Districts is the connectivity between teachers and students. It rarely happens, but when it does, it's super amazing. Like my favorite um, language comp teacher, Miss Joyce, um, I remember her doing giving us an assignment. Um, it was um, an assignment writing about um, one day of any part of your life. And so I decided to write a day about a mundane day I had, just me getting up and getting food because I was hungry after playing games for so long. And I just remember how she left a comment saying, good job on like distributing such complicated details into a simple story. And I felt the connectivity there because I still learn what language cop is about, you know, the proper grammar, the proper focusing in sentences, but she also gets to learn about my daily life and what I do on a daily basis. So yes, I feel that connectivity. Thank you. Hi, so first and foremost, um, I think for me, my biggest highlight in the Brockton School District was being a part of the 2A program. Um, the 2A program is a program um, where I got to learn Spanish and English um, at the same time. We would develop our Spanish skills as well as our English skills. And um, I met some of my lifelong friends there. And I think that's just something that I'll hold with me for the rest of my life. I still speak Spanish today. I'm a part of the IB um, Spanish program still. And it's just one of the greatest things that I've accomplished in my life, like learning a new language as well as being Cape Verde American. Um, I speak a little bit of Creole, but I understand most of it. And it's just been great and like kind of like being able to connect with other people that are similar to me um as well as like watching um my peers my teachers my administration and everybody grow around me and kind of like create this environment for me um i'm very appreciative of all of them um and i love like i love all of them still to this day especially seeing them here in the crowd as well um and so, yeah, and I'm also a student athlete, so I feel like having that um, has also helped me kind of diversify and build my character and creating new friends. And yeah, so that's, I feel like those are the highlights. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you so much. And we're gonna just ask the same questions, but to the parents, as parents, what do you like about Broughton Public Schools or what are some notable highlights? Uh, for me, what I like is that I think and I feel that the system makes everyone feel welcome and accepted, and that's something I really like. And also, uh, during the summer, they're trying to make sure that nobody is out of the system, that everyone can have the opportunity to keep growing and developing their abilities and enjoying uh, the education in different way and having fun. And, uh, and that's the most I like. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to agree with exactly what she said about that with the uh, inclusion program. My uh, oldest is actually a member of the George Schools Immersion Program, uh, something that uh, a lot of other districts don't currently offer. So he's benefiting in the same way that Amelia had stated. And I'm very excited to watch him grow like that. And alongside him, I'm picking up various things uh, Having a bilingual student is, is very helpful. It's optimistic for me in his future. It gives him a lot of advantages that he wouldn't get elsewhere. Um, in addition, uh, the Brockton Public Schools do offer numerous uh, extracurricular activities that people can take advantage of, things that when I was younger were not around. Um, so it's fantastic to see those things that are so open and so readily accessible for many people. Um, it can only give kids advantages. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, 
I like the program in Brockton Bible School. This team respect everybody's uh, creativity for the children. Everything good. But me, I want to more participation in the parents and the activity. Because sometimes the program, uh, activity by, uh, is when is a, uh, what can I say? When you want to do something, the parents know, or oh, I don't, uh, you don't know something. Maybe, uh, example, uh, the parents, more parents know speak English very well. But I want uh, the program uh, do for the language in the country, they put it, the program, the language, Example, a, a Creole, Asian Creole, or Cape Virgin Creole, any time. But sometimes the people no participate in the program and activity, you don't know, the parents don't know that this team, the team just say, sometimes or they send the paper, sometimes the parents know, I don't understand nothing. But every day I see only Mrs. Presume, I thank uh, the baby school for the more people in the a community at baby school. I think uh, that's good for me. It's very good for the. That's, uh. right, thank you. One thing that I like about the Brockton Public School System is the amount of academic opportunities presented. We have the IB program here at the high school and in some of the middle schools, which isn't something that every school in this state or something that every state offers. Um, I also think that Brockton has always done a good job with its special education programs. I have an IEP. I got it when I was in middle school, and it's something that my schools in Brockton, um, in the Brockton public school system, have always handled very, very well. And something that's really important to me and that has helped me thrive in my years in Brockton public schools. And I think it's something important to a lot of other people as well. What are what are some of your highlights here? Well, thank you so much for asking. But I think one of the my best highlights here is something that most of you guys already stated was diversity. Um, Brockton High is one, well, Brockton, the district as a whole, um, is one of the most diverse counties or districts in the whole entire Massachusetts. And I, I feel like our panel could definitely agree with that, which we have African American, which African Americans, which compose of roughly 60% of the student body, Hispanics, not, roughly 19%, which if you add that up, I'm not really too good on, at math, but <laughs> it's roughly like 80%. A Brockton district is minority. So, so for people who, like me who you know, speak Spanish, Spanish is my first language, I feel like I've had multiple chances to you know, create these welcoming communities, like the two-way program, which Amelia stated. Um, I feel like I, I was in that since kindergarten, so I was always with people who were like-minded, who shared the similar culture as me. And just to sum up some of the points of what the panel stated is like diversity, um, student and teacher's relationship. We have a lot of teachers here who are extremely loving and caring. We have um, connectivity, like teachers and students want to build these type of relationships so students can better learn and teachers can better teach. And programs and extracurriculars. And this kind of brings me into our next question because one of the best ways to improve is to reflect. And I can sit here and brag all about Brockton High School or all the Brockton District and how we're the best. Can we get a round of applause for that? Because I know we are the best. <laughs> and I kind of I want to continue to be the best. But to be the best, you have to reflect. We have to improve. We have to discuss all the problems and issues that are ongoing today. And we're going to start off with the parents. What are some of the challenges you have faced as a parent in Brockton? Where do you think BHS can improve? We want to start over here. It's what are some issues you faced as a parent in the Brockton public school system?
Do you want to start us off? I can go. All right, thank you. Okay. So I have been in some way lucky that I don't really have too much bad experience with the system, but I can say or what I can see is that one of them can be the barrier of the lack of language. For some people don't speak very well English as he was saying before. Also, when you are an immigrant, you come with a different background and then different perspective about things. So when we can hear, we need to adjust to the system and we are trying to understand. I have four kids now and two of them are in the system. And for me, at the same way when my first son, he's growing or he's uh, moving on in the system, I am learning with him and questions come out for me. But um, I think if we have the opportunity to have more ability for people or to open the door, I know that happened, but probably we need more that the people feel more comfortable about not feel bad because they don't speak English very well. Mm -hmm. They're going to be better for them and to trust the system and to feel able to to speak up and to spread their fears and their question and whatever they have. Actually, they, I had an experience when she is a Ecuadorian woman uh, that was three weeks ago. So I brought one of my second son to the school bus stop and her daughter, she's in kindergarten, so she rides the same bus, bus, school bus with my son. So she was crying. And just I, I approached to her and I said, why is she crying? And she said, maybe because children in the bus is hitting her. And just I told her, did you call to the school and let them know what's going on? And she just said, I didn't. Why not? Because I don't speak um, English, sorry, she speaks Spanish. And just I said, I can go with you to the school and we can talk. I can translate for you, but you are not alone. Because it's like many parents, they don't speak up because of that. They feel, mm -hmm. they feel afraid. They feel because they are not able to speak the language. And sometimes um, at the school, probably they don't have someone that can speak the language. Mm -hmm. So that makes everything worse. Yeah. So I think um, the lack of the uh, communication for parents is a huge issue. So probably we need to do something like in every school in the system, they, can, they need to feel that even though they don't speak the language, there is someone to understand and support them, and they know that they, they're going to be heard. Yeah. So that is the feeling I got about that. All right, thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. My time is to participate beaucoup plus in the program, the program of the school, because sometimes parents are the same. Ils sont éloignés par eux. Par eux, ils manquent de participer dans le programme. Ils manquent de connaître ce qui s'est passé dans l'école. Des fois, c'est tout le monde qui a dit mais ça s'est passé, mais ça n'est pas bon. Donc, par eux, vraiment pas inclus dans le programme, dans l'activité de l'école. Donc, ça m'a demandé, moi, je m'a nous pour que les parents beaucoup plus intégrés dans l'activité de l'école. All right, so, I'm Mr. G, I'm the interpreter for today. Um, Thank you. I think his point is uh, he would love to see the parents to be more involved in the school life, in the, in, in the life, in the educational life of their kids. He feels that uh, very often the children are the one translating for their parents and sometimes the communication is, is not always the best. So he would suggest that the district finds a way of using the parents' native language when trying to communicate with the parents, and he would love to see that being done a little bit more often. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I, unfortunately, uh, not, well, not unfortunately, but to my benefit, I don't tackle the same kind of conflicts that the other parents here do. Um, since my language barrier is not existent, unfor like, fortunately for me and my family, um, I would say that there are other challenges that face many out there that I do know about. Um, 
and I would echo what they said. Um, in addition, there are a lot of uh, times where getting the child um, certain kind of uh, services that they need, you run into many hurdles, a lot of the time brought forth by uh, various forms of paperwork. Um, not knowing the pro proper course of action to follow, or not knowing who to contact to find out the services that you need. Um, when you do run up to somebody, oftentimes you um, have found in my personal experiences that you're directed somewhere else and you end up kind of chasing a ghost. Um, it would be uh, beneficial if we had more direct routes or more resources readily available that people could easily access, whether that be digitally or even in the school systems themselves through handouts. Um, multilingual would obviously be best. Um, but yeah, just a more easily communicative way of reaching out to families and for getting students the help they need, whatever form that may they take. All right, thank you to all of our parents. Now for our student panelists, we asked the same question, but what are some uh, exper uh, not so positive experiences you've had or as a student, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I understand what you're trying to ask me there. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to touch upon the communication aspect that you were talking about. Um, there's a lot of times when teachers aren't communicating enough um, with the parents and with the student as well. Um, I feel like for me, just be speaking from my perspective, there's a lot of times when my when my teachers are trying to get to my parent and they're kind of just leaving me out of like what's being dealt with or um, how like I'm acting or something. So I feel like having that kind of fluid, fluent, fluid um, kind of relationship is most important. And also, um, I don't specifically have this problem, but I see this problem more often than I should in um, this district where teachers aren't able to communicate with the parents because the parents have a language barrier. And this happens so often because of the, because of the community being predominantly cultured. Um, it just happens more than it should, and I feel like it definitely sh needs to be a change, and there definitely needs to be interpreters on deck at all times. Um, we shouldn't have to be, a, we shouldn't have to like run around and try to find a person that can speak that language. It just should be easily accessible. And, and as a um, student, what would you say affects you more? Affects me more? Yeah, like as a student. What, like, give me that perspective. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was getting there, okay. Um, so, <laughs> so. Um, something that affects me is, like I said, the communicative aspect of that. Um, a lot of times I feel like my teachers are kind of just giving me a grade and then not telling me why I got that grade and then I'm not able to improve on that grade or I'm not able to improve as a person. Um, I'm not able to improve my morality or my just my character at all. Um, so that's I feel like that's the biggest problem there. And then also... Um, how they don't understand my personal life, um, what may be going on in my personal life. Um, and sometimes I'm not like, I don't want to tell them what's going on in my personal life. I feel like they should just kind of automatically understand that I'm a person too, I go through the same things, and I know that like I'm a student and I don't have that kind of um, level above you, obviously, because I'm younger than you. But I am a person with feelings and I have a life and I have, I do my work. I go to school, I, I have to come home, I have to go to practice right away, then I have to come home, I have to like take care of my siblings or I have to get rid of, not get rid of, but I have to do some things and oftentimes um, maybe I'm not able to get my assignment done on time and then it's taken, there's like a shame on me for not getting that done when really I have like a valid excuse and then it's just being excused right away and it just, sometimes it's kind of like, demoralizing when my teacher's not understanding me and I feel like having that connectivity is most important when you're dealing with a student to kind of have that empathy for them because being a student and being a high school student especially is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do and I'm like honestly as a junior I'm struggling the most I have in my entire life and a lot of times teachers aren't understanding of that and it and it kind of it's just like it kind of hurts that they don't understand it. So I feel like that's just something that teachers have to improve on in general, just being able to connect with your students and kind of sharing that, um, that kind of experience with each other. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I'm hearing is to, oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> 
So essentially, what I'm hearing is that we want to um, boost up the cultural responsiveness of our school district, essentially where teachers and administrators could understand the students' perspective and understand that, you know, we're also humans. We have stuff going on in our lives. So actually, I want to say something else as well. So um, <laughs> um, we're on a so clock, going Amelia. back to the what did you say? We're on a clock. Uh, oh, OK. <laughs> OK. I'm on. You can go. Nah, <laughs> we we will definitely come back to you. Don't worry. But, you know, Why we want to give have to do all the stopping. Well, one of us has to. So <laughs> <laughs> right, Oscar. Um, something that the Brockton Public School District could improve on is the hierarchical system between teachers and students. Like I said earlier, um, some teachers have great connection with students, but I rarely do see that in each classrooms. Um, I'm fortunate enough in my current year of high school, I have multiple teachers that are making connectional bridges with me and are trying to understand me better. but. Throughout middle, my middle school years, I rarely got to see that with myself or other students, and I feel like that's a problem that we need to address. Another problem that I think of on top of my head is the morality of every student. Because some students have great morals, they have great mindsets, and everything about them is great. You don't find like that much flaws in them, but a lot of the students that you can find there's something off about them. You don't know what is truly there. And I feel like if we just are able to improve ourselves and improve each other, like we will have a good system. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oscar. Um, some challenges I've had um, in the Brockton Public School System was um, mostly finding my place and like finding people I could trust and like communicate with. Um, I feel like as you go up through middle school and high school, it becomes easier. There's more diversity. There's more people in the school. But definitely when I was in elementary, um, it was really hard for me to like find other kids that I could like talk to and feel comfortable around. A lot of times I would like try to talk to some kids or like try to talk to a teacher, but it would just be like kind of awkward for me. I wouldn't feel like I wouldn't know what to say to them. And yeah, that was like, that's like the main challenge I've had. Um, really finding people like I could talk to, like it's kind of the same theme as theirs, the connectivity between your teacher and the student. There's, it's not always there. I feel like um, the teachers could build upon that and make it easier for students to go up to them and to talk to them. Sometimes you'll feel weird going to talk to a teacher and really you just won't do it and then it'll end up being like, Oh, if you had spoken up sooner, it would have been mm -hmm. better for you, but you just don't know how to talk, talk up for yourself. And yeah, it definitely becomes easier. I feel like as you find more friends, more people through the system, it becomes easier. But um, definitely at the start in elementary, I feel for a lot of kids, it might be hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, am I speaking too loud? Speaking not loud enough. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't see that far. I'm blind. Look this. <laughs> so, um, one of the one of the challenges that I faced through um, BBS schools was like when I first got here, I did not know how to speak English. I was like an English learner, so it was hard for me to talk because I had the accent. I was learning, I knew a little bit of English, but I did not know a lot. But there are all that people made fun of me for the way I talked and then it's at a point where I had to stutter and I had a lot of anxiety making friends and I had social anxiety. And then every time I try to talk to people, I get scared and we play the thing. Like, and we play the conversation in my head before I say it to somebody. And even today, when I'm speaking, if I make one English error, I'll think about it a whole day and feel like everybody's judging me for it. So that's one of the, like, I've got bullied for it. So now every time I'm talking, sometimes I have a stutter and I have anxiety. And I feel like everybody's judging me, but sometimes they're probably not. But that's just in my head. And then um, 
One of the things I think um, BPS school should improve in is to not give up on the students, like all of them were saying, to not really give up on the students because you don't really know what's going on at home. Sometimes they need you and you don't know that. And then by not doing the homework, it's like a cry for help. Y'all don't understand that. And they have a lot of like depression, especially in this generation. A lot of kids have a lot of depression and et cetera. They need help. And then they don't know how to like ask for it. I mean, they don't know when they really need it. Because they usually deal with their own stuff by themselves. They don't really have somebody to be there for them and not doing their homework. And I'm not saying that's an excuse, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, like, it's just don't give up so easily and make it in your mindset that students doesn't want to do their homework. That just, oh, my God, they want to fail. Nobody wants to fail in life. They just need help. And, yeah, that's one of the things you should really improve. I think that one thing that the Brockton public school system tr um, tends to fail on is communicating and working with students of marginalized identities. And I can't speak on matters of race in this school system, but I'm a part of the queer community, and I said earlier I have an IEP, so I am in the special ed program, and I have been for a while. Um, so first I wanted to talk about um, issues regarding being queer in Brockton public schools. I'm trans, I use him pronouns, I came out when I was in the seventh grade and now I'm in my uh, the 11th grade, so it's been a while. Um, one thing that Brockton tends to struggle with when it comes to identities like this is pronouns and making them more normal and making kids that don't use the pronouns they were assigned with at birth, they don't make that easy. Uh, like. When you introduce yourselves in class, I'll have to make myself the odd man out and I'll have to say what pronouns I use instead of my teacher saying, why don't we go around and say this? And so I, it comes to the decision, do I wanna make myself weird? Do I wanna be the odd man out? Or do I wanna be gendered incorrectly the entire year? Um, and also teachers tend not to stick up for students that are trans when they're misgendered. And it, once again, it comes down to the decision, do I wanna be that angry queer person or do I want to be misgendered this year? And I don't think that's a decision that a student that came here to learn should have to make. Um, I say the biggest issue, and this is not just at the high school. I've experienced this ever since I came out when I was in middle school, are bathrooms. Um, specifically at Brockton High, there are two gender neutral bathrooms. I do not feel comfortable enough using the binary ones. I don't feel safe enough. I don't feel like I would be safe using those bathrooms. And there's two gender neutral bathrooms in this entire school. And you've been here all day, so you know how big it is. And it's hard when you're in a class and you have to travel all that way to use a bathroom. And not only is it frustrating, exhausting, it's dehumanizing. Like that I have to go, I have to wait until it's time to go home to use the bathroom. Um, another thing that I quickly wanted to talk about is matters of neurodivergence in students. That's things like autism and ADHD, and I think that it's not taken seriously in students unless it's severe. Um, I think that a lot of times when students show clear signs of neurodivergence, autism, ADHD, they're written off, written off as troublemakers or loud or um, just trying to disrupt the class instead of trying to like see what they need. Why are they talking this much? Why are they getting up and moving around? Are they not understanding the social cues that I'm trying to give them? And like I said, I have an IP and I think that I've been worked with really well on this, but lots of students don't have IEPs. Lots of students, it's hard for them to get IEPs. You said, Mr. Nolan, that it's hard to get the things that your children needs because of the amount of paperwork and the amount of loops that you have to go through, the amount of people you have to talk to. Not everyone can get IPs or 504s and lots of students that don't have these, their mental health or their issues are ignored. And I think that Jahir wanted to talk more about that. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, mental health is a topic that isn't really touched upon here at Brockton High and is usually left until the students mention it that, hey, I have something going on in my life. Hey, I'm suffering through this illness or this or that. And sometimes it goes, really goes undiagnosed. 
And especially after COVID, I feel like our community have experienced a rise in depression and anxiety and all these other mental illnesses that we don't really get to talk about. And I feel like this was, we were really rushed to go back to school. We were rushed, you know, go back to academics. And I feel like it's hard to focus on school when you have so many things going on in your life. And sometimes it's just not really addressed. You don't really have somewhere to go to like a support system sometimes you know there's I can speak for many students who usually don't have parents at home who have the time to talk about mental illnesses I know mental illness in my life isn't really addressed at home either and to come to school and to know that it's not going to be addressed here as well it's harder it kind of leaves me the burden of dealing with my own mental health which is fine but we're here to grow and develop and I can't grow and develop on my own it's going to be much harder. I do understand that, but I would like to see more support. I would like to see more programs to help kids who are suffering from these silent illnesses that aren't always, you know, prevalent. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I'm done. I Sorry. Yes, hearing all of you, you just remind me something, and I don't want to live here without saying that. Um, most of the people here, what I understand, are teachers. And um, the feeling I got as a parent is that you are doing your job and you are trying to do the best you can, but sometimes you need to go beyond, not just going to the classroom and teach. They need to be heard. They need to be feel love. They need to feel that you care about them. Sometimes as a teacher, it's better when you take a time and just say, how was your day yesterday? Or do you have something to eat? Sometimes the, the child, they don't feel comfortable talking at home, but they can trust you. And um, always I feel that we are a team. As a parent, we are trying to do our job, and you are doing our job. But if we work together, we're going to help that child in a better way. Mm -hmm. So that is something I, I feel that we are lacking. Some teachers, not all of you, some. They care about the grades, as some of you were saying. They, they are moving on and they are achieving checklists, checklists. But we need, to ter we need to care about the person. Because if we stimulate the emotional area in the person, that person is going to do the next step and going to perform in the way we want in the school. So that is something else is lacking. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much. much. Make it quick. Um, I think Sayina wanted to touch upon that thing briefly. Since we are running out of time, I'll give you a few seconds. You sure? We'll okay. try. Well, perfect. And we're just going to lead on to our last question. If Mr. G, you can gracefully, you know, pronounce. I mean, I pronounce, introduce that question to him, which is, why do you think it's important for Boston Public Schools to remain committed to equity, diversity, and inclusion. And I want to try to do this quickly because we have 10 minutes left, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have five minutes left. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> so we're just going to start off over here with Saina because I know you wanted to say something. I'm sorry for cutting you short, but. It's okay. Um, the reasons. I think, um, okay, I'm going to speak really fast because I heard this five minutes. So the reason that um, diversity and whatever the word is, and diversity should be um, important in the classroom because there's a lot of people that came from everywhere and they need that adult to be there for them and to talking wise. Not only students, because the students are going through the same thing, like we need an adult sometimes to understand us and how we feel. And that diversity, having that one teacher that speak it, not only one, but like, other teachers that because that if we have one teacher they might be busy but knowing that you have other options and then you could go and talk to them and knowing that other people can be there for you too and you could be um I'm sorry I'm trying to like <laughs> so like that to have that teacher that's going to be there for you that came from your own like me I come from Haiti and I am so grateful that I have those Haitian teachers that are there for me when I need them, like Mr. G over there. Um, yeah, so, and other ones, but thank you, that's why, yeah, I'm done, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Um, I think it's important to remain committed to equity, diversion, and inclusion because it gives people a voice. It gives people a place to present their voice. And um, without that voice, I don't think there will, there will be no change because so really for there to be change, we need to know what's going on wrong so like that we can build and change that. But without that voice, we can't know what's going wrong. So if we keep on going with the equity, diversion, and inclusion program, I feel like students in the classroom will feel more inclined to speak about their problems and to um, tell their teachers and the administrators what's going on. And then that's what will help us change. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna give a quick warning for our last panelist, like 30 seconds max. <laughs> You skipped over Oscar. Um, the reason why we should continue on using equity, diversity, and inclusion is because mainly there's a lot of, how should I say this, complaints that I do have and I don't get to say them a lot. Sorry. And I feel like having a class like this would really help out the school system because with more complaints means better improvement to the overall schools and I hope this gets to like every single school in every single state because this is a really good idea for everyone. All right, thank you. You can talk fast, girls. Since I'm on a time limit here, um, <laughs> I just think that it's really important of us um, to stay committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, mainly because we are a device community and I feel like we need to have kind of that balance here and that ratio. Um, to accommodate those students and to accommodate those teachers because teachers also go through this, some of the same things that students do with especially the language barrier. And a lot of you guys um, come to this country as immigrants and have to learn the new language and are still trying to learn because we are lifelong learners. Um, as teachers, your education doesn't stop in high school, it doesn't stop in college, it goes until you're gone, obviously, but um, <laughs> not to be morbid, but uh, so yeah, and I like take that into account myself. I don't just stop learning right when I leave school. I continue learning. I, I try to expand my education as much as possible um, and what I do. And so, and to improve our environment and create a healthier and happier environment for everyone, I feel like this is the most important way to do that. And this is the best way to do that. And so while Rodney is interrupting me here, um, we will, that's the end of what I have to say. Thank you. Okay, because we are on a time crunch, we are moving on to the question portion. One, we have one question, so. Do I have to pick one? Wait. Okay, raise your hand if you want the left question to be read. We're reading this one. <laughs> so, just a question. Do you feel what you are learning from school prepares to be success successful in the next chapter of your life, such as college or a career? Do you feel what you're learning is worth learning after all? Okay. Briefly. Briefly, please. Okay, okay. Briefly. Y'all cannot be putting that pressure on me. Don't do that. So, um, so like, um, I think every everything is meant to be learned everything happens for a reason so what we're learning in school i don't think i will pop particularly need it at like at a random time but like if you go to um a store and then you have to know what what sense that you need you have to to know how to count to have to be able to pay so i think that's important and i also think like knowing having that mindset in college having that mindset of why we're learning right now will obviously help you in college or whatsoever whatever um we need in life like having to learn english you have to have the perfect punctuation when you're talking you have to have that mannerism that word the perfect like um verbs and etc so yeah i think um it's worth it to be learning in school and what we're learning is also good for us in the future so yeah i'm done well thank you so much to our panelists thank you so much for the answer to questions Due to time, I would have to introduce our superintendent, who's just going to give us a few words. Could we please get a round of applause for him, please? How about these student ambassadors? Give them a round of applause. Great job.
I also want to thank our parents so much for participating. Um, and we need to hear voices. We need to lift your voices because we serve you. I mean, we work for you. So we really appreciate your input, your honesty, um, and we look forward to continuing our partnership. Um, finally, I want everybody out there in TV land to give their presenters a big round of applause for the room you're in. I made it to about 30 classrooms today, and um, what I saw was really great work going on, so we appreciate the presenters and the work they did putting their presentations together, but also for all the staff that participated for your uh, attendance, your engagement. It's, it's, um, it's much appreciated. And finally, one of our um, focus areas is probably our most important one, even though it's listed third, is positive relationships. Um, that's what we're about. That's what we need to be about. You can't have active reading and writing. Uh, you can't have effective instruction without positive relationships for us. So um, thank you all. Thank you for a great day. Renee and your team, Donnell, um, Cam, thank you for a great job putting this together. Um, it won't be easy exiting the place, but be careful driving out. Uh, school police will do their best to um, help us get out of the parking lot, but everybody travel safely and have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.